Is low loss cable the right choice for your next HF portable operation? We'll take a look at that in the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, quality coax cable can be a significant investment for your amateur radio station. A common mantra is to save your money on the antenna and to spend it on the cable. For a certain extent, I would agree with that, as good quality coaxial cable will give you years of use and reduce your overall losses. It is also easier later on down the line to upgrade the antenna than it is to spend money and time and effort upgrading your cable system. But when operating portable, low loss coax can be heavy and unwieldy. And I find the best option is to use a more inexpensive cable. In our recent portable operation for winter field day, we hung up an N-fed antenna in the sub-zero temperature. Uh, the conditions were brutal, and if we had selected a low-loss cable, I'm sure we'd still be trying to unwind it from its frozen coil. But enough from me. Uh, here's Joe, KD9CGX, to explain more. So, another thing to think about, especially in cold weather operations, is your feed line. Uh, we're using coax. Um, the issue that you have, especially when it's, like I said, it's five below. I'll say that probably 20 more times in this video. Is that this is getting real stiff. This is RG8X. Um, it's fairly inexpensive for HF uh, applications. It's uh, really good. Um, not terrible loss. I mean, you can get better coax with lower loss per 100 foot, but the trade off is, is that they're probably going to be a little more stiffer, uh, harder to work with in portable operations. So, um, in this particular situation, uh, for operating, I've always said cheaper is better. Um, because if it, it's going to get damaged, it's going to get wrecked, it's going to get ruined, um, and you're not out, you know, two, three dollars a foot versus this is probably about fifty cents a foot, seventy-five cents a foot. So right now I got a coil of LMR 400 in the garage, and it's like spring steel. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not doing anything. Yeah, this ain't much better right now. It's, it's stiff, but um, it's workable right now. So. Uh, we're going to use it. A couple things to consider in cold weather. Um, of course, it's snowing, or at least it's blowing snow. Uh, you want to keep any sort of snow or moisture out of here as much as possible. You don't want it to short. Um, we're doing all right here. So, we're just going to screw around there. And this is a temporary setup. It's going to be down in 24 hours, so we're not going to weatherproof the connector. No we're tape. We're not getting rain. No, no. It's not going to rain anytime soon, boys and girls. And, uh, well, another thing to consider portable-wise is that it's sometimes not practical to keep a 100-foot um, roll of coax, either in your go bag or your vehicle. So I use 25s, and um, as you need them, you just put them together. And, uh, these barrel connectors are basically uh, two uh, 239s back to back. They're only a couple bucks. Um, they do have a little bit of loss to them. But really, at HF frequencies, not not the, terrible. It's it's about a fifth of a dB. So that ain't horrible um, for VHF UHF. Well, for VHF and UHF, you want to be using this type of coax at all. And for portable operations, for um, weak signal VHF UHF, that's a different ball game. So as you can see, a thinner cable like RG8X or Mini-8 is easier to wind out um, and the shorter lengths are going to give you a lot more flexibility to pick and choose just the right overall length for your deployment. Just pack a handful of barrel connectors in your go kit and you can easily string all of those cables together. But what about losses? Uh, on the HF spectrum, the losses are really minimal. For a 100 foot run, RG8X has 1.5 dB of loss at 28 megahertz and 0.5 dB at uh, 3.6 megahertz. Since we're all talking in decibels, every 3 dB step up doubles the power and every 3 dB step down halves the power. So at 25 megahertz with a 1.5 dB of loss, 100 watts um, into the cable will equal about 70 watts at the antenna. Now this seems, those slots seems a little high, but um, as we go all the way down to the 80 meter band, 
a 5 point dB loss turns a 100 watt out of the radio to a hefty 88 watts at the antenna. So let's talk about this on a little bit more practical term. Most HF transceivers have their S meters calibrated in 6 dB steps. That means a step from S8 to S9 signifies a 4 times power difference. So switching uh, between RG8X and a low loss cable will barely cause that meter to wiggle. And it certainly won't affect the readability of your signal. Low loss cables like LMR400 can be about four times the cost of RG8X. So the extra investment in cable is, isn't worth it for the marginal gains you're gonna receive on the HF bands. For HF portable operation, RG8X is my first choice cable. It's uh, relatively inexpensive and easy to work with, even in the cold weather. Make yourself a kit with three or four 25 foot lengths and a few barrel connectors, and you'll be well on your way to putting together uh, a cable with just about any HF deployment need. So what are your experiences with coaxial cable for portable HF operation? Please leave it in the comments below and I'll pick out the best ones for my next Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So I really appreciate it if you give me that big thumbs up or um, subscribe to the videos and even check out some of the other ones that are um, recommended alongside me here. Well, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and 73.